A pleasant noon to one and all. I welcome you all to this keynote session one on innovating cognitive computing to transform that. So it's my pleasure and privilege to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. P. Selapan. Dr. P. Selapan is currently a professor of information technology and dean of information technology at Malaysia University of Science and Technology. He held similar academic position at the University of Malaya, Faculty of Computer Science and Information Technology before joining MUST. He holds a BSc degree in statistics from the University of Malaya. MSc in Computer Science from University of London and PhD in Interdisciplinary Information Science from the University of Pittsburgh. Professor Selapan has been in academia for over 35 years and has taught both undergraduate and postgraduate courses like advanced programming, data structures and algorithms, system analysis and design, software engineering, database system, data mining, health informatics, web application, e-commerce, Operating system, management information system, research methods, mathematics, and statistics. His present interest includes data science, blockchain, cloud computing, quantum physics, DNA, neuroscience, energy, frequency, and vibration for healing and illness. Over the years, he has received several research grants from Malaysian government under e science and FRGS schemes. He has successfully supervised 25 PhD theses in informatics and 30 MSc theses in IT and has published over 100 scholarly research papers in peer reviewed international journals and conference series. He has written several IT textbooks for university and college students. Professor Selepun serves in editorial and review boards of international journals and conferences. He is a certified trainer, external examiner for master and PhD thesis, external program assessor for IT programs, and key speaker in IT conferences. His professional affiliation includes members in Chartered Engineering Council, UK, British Computer Society, UK, and Institute of Statistician, UK, Malaysian Board of Technology. So I welcome Dr. Selipan sir to take over the session. Thank you. Okay. Hello, good morning again. Can you hear me? Okay, good morning. I will try to make it short, but uh, sometimes can be long as well. Okay, anyway, uh, let me start. Uh, innovative, innovating cognitive computing to transform lives. I added the word to transform lives. It's so important. If it doesn't transform your life and my life, not very useful, all this cognitive computing. Okay. So it must change our lives for the better, not for the worse, huh? for the better. So this is always key in any technologies. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, there is a long list of agenda, but I will short some of the things, maybe skip some of the things. Cognitive computing domains. Generations of computing, AI centric computing, all this you are familiar. You all the brains here, IT brains are all here. Okay. So I will just skip very fast. Okay. Go through very fast. AI centric computing, cognitive computing, cognitive applications, benefits and challenges, all this you already know. So I'm not bringing something new that you don't know or uh, you don't already know. Okay. But I will just give some dimensions some aspects that you may be awakened to 
or at least consider the possibilities. Yeah? Consider the possibilities. That is where developing new applications, augmenting uh, cognitive computing with brain, you know, functions. Uh, so this will be new kind of exposure to you. I think the first half is you already are familiar. Okay. Then recognizing, you know, our human nature and things like that. Okay, all these you are very familiar, artificial intelligence, cognitive computing, cognitive system, cognitive technology. We will use the terms interchangeably. And then I will introduce a new word, Kynos technologies. Kynos is a Greek word. Not exactly I'm using in the same way. Lah. It means new, fresh, unexplored. Unexplored, not fully tapped technologies. I know technology is a Greek word. No? Okay, cognitive com uh, computing permits. You have linguistic. Again, cognitive computing is all interdisciplinary as multidisciplinary, whatever you want to call it. It is linguistic, it has psychology, it has philosophy, computer science, neuroscience, biology, mathematics, everything. Okay, so cognitive computing encompasses all sorts of domains. Huh? Uh, generations of computing, all these you are familiar, you have already studied here. Uh, we started with traditional computing, you know, uh, traditional computing, conventional way of managing information, um, characteristic batch processing, manual, all these things you already know. Okay, Cloud computing, that is a big uh, sort of game changer in the industry, especially they don't have to invest so much of time and money, so much of initial investment. You don't have to buy all the hardware, servers, you know, uh, infrastructure and things like that, or even software. So it's now all services. Everything is services, uh, deployment models, your public, private and hybrid computing, uh, hybrid cloud rather, and service models, infrastructure as a service and the software as a service, platform as a service, and this is good for companies, good for organizations, they don't have to spend so much initial investment, okay? You you can scale up, as you heard in the morning, you can scale up as and when necessary, as you go along, you can scale up or scale down, you know, whatever your business works. Uh, example, you have uh, Amazon Web Service, and uh, of course, you have uh, Azure Virtual Machines, Google app, uh, app engines, Azure Web Services, and Microsoft Office 360, all these are service uh, service uh, facilities. So the characteristic is virtualization. Virtualization, you don't have to worry about which computer it is running, you know, one computer can act as a two or three computers, you know. So virtualization, scalability, security, flexibility, on demand, pay as you go, all these are attractive. I mean, attractive um, characteristics uh, for businesses. So they don't have to invest so much uh, 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 front. Okay. So these are very, very good. So cloud computing is a big uh, advance in the in, uh, advancement. Big data uh, computing, I think it has been there for many years already. You have all sorts of data, structured data, unstructured data, semi structured data audio, video, image, and all sorts of things, you know, geographical information system, everything is there. So you have the complexity and the speed is very rapid. Every every second, don't know how many gigabytes of data is generated. You know, how are you going to track all this data, you know, uh, it's uh, diverse data sources, you have social media data, Facebook, you know, WhatsApp, everything. And you have sensors, databases, healthcare, uh, governments, e-commerce, supply chain, ge geospatial, satellite imagery, all these things generated every second. And how to use all these massive amounts of data generated every second. Okay. Um, diverse data types, I already mentioned, diverse data types, and including G GPS, coordinates, time series, binary, genomic data, DNA sequences, big data technologies, you have Hadoop and Apache, Spark and all those things. And um, 
NoSQL databases like Mongo, Cassandra, and all those things. Huh? All these you are familiar. Huh? So, AI centric computing, of course, you have learned supervised learning, and unsupervised, and semi supervised. So, all these are different ways of training, training your data sets and testing your data sets. So, you have uh, machine learning models like uh, that predicts, that classifies. Uh, examples linear regression, logistic regression, uh, as, uh, support uh, vector machines, TNN, and all those things, naive base. And unsupervised learning for clustering and dimen dimensionality reduction and anomaly detection as well. Okay. Supervised learning, semi supervised learning, which takes advantage of both the types of learning. So, that is, uh, I think you people have learned all those things. Like. So machine learning, deep learning, deep learning at more layers, at more layers. Some are, um, you know, three layers is a minimum sort of thing. You have four layers, five layers, eight layers. All these has got language translations and things like that. It uses more layers. So that is deep learning. Of course, you use graphical process, GPU units and so on to process all these massive amounts of train uh, data. Natural language processing is a big thing in the last few months or years, you know. It's a big thing. It is changing everything uh, from natural, natural language, from one language to any language almost. Uh, you can do that almost as you know, good as uh, the real one, I think. Speech recognition, speech to text, text to speech, all these is, um, well, okay, speech recognition is again very important. Uh, ability, uh, in the machine to be able to, to translate uh, text to speech, speech to text, and so on. Computer vision, especially useful in manufacturing to detect uh, defective parts, defective articles, defective parts, maybe, you know. So, all this is very, very useful. Um, and uh, robotics, now robotics is, a, is becoming very big. Hospital robotics, hospital robotics. Restaurant robotics, you know, all sorts of robotics, uh, specialized robotics. Uh, uh, expert system, you already know reinforced learning, generative adversarial networks, generator and discriminator, where it uses unique data. But the, the, these uh, generative adversarial networks can use your data and create other data which is similar to your, your input data. So, all this is becoming big things. Cognitive computing, of course, is uh, all using AI, la, all using AI, all the deep learning. Of course, the goal is to create uh, computers that can mimic human abilities, human intelligence, humans learning, remembering, solving problems, uh, decision making. So this is what cognitive computing is. Okay, it simulates the human thought, processes, behaviors, and analyze, interpret, understand language, and learn over time as well. Learn over time. So it uses all the machine learning, neural networks, and natural language processing, and so on. Uh, so all these you are familiar. Okay. So the uh, cognitive computing, AI centric. Is all a disruptive technology. It is disrupting the way business is being done, disrupting almost every area. I think more and more AI is used in new products, new software. Your database so far, it has been all information processing, retrieving information, storing information in the best way. The new wave of database software will be intelligence will be put inside. Okay, so it will. With an intelligent database um, machines with the dashboards and everything, you know. And it's a game changer. It impacts both businesses and individuals. So companies will be definitely be using, whether you like it or not, it will be used. Uh, so companies will be using, individuals will be using. So it is disruptive. It is a game changer. We have to accept that. We have to adapt accordingly so that we can uh, function. You know, you know, you always have a place somewhere. So you need to find your niche area to do that. Okay. Uh, 
uh, I'm going to go very fast. Uh, machine learning applications, you're already very familiar. Uh, image and speech, uh, speech recognition and NLP is used uh, everywhere. Recommender system, Netflix, Facebook, all these things you have. Finance, autonomous vehicles. Again, it's becoming becoming popular. I think recently they introduced in Los Angeles area. I think it's Jaguar, if I'm not mistaken. Autonomous vehicles. So are you comfortable driving in autonomous vehicles? What if the autonomous vehicles takes over Bangalore? I don't know how it is going to be. You know. No noise pollution, maybe, maybe no noise pollution. So anyway, autonomous make, uh, vehicles, I don't know how expensive, you need lots of sensors, cameras, you know, all those things you need. It may be more expensive. And then how much energy you need. Energy is a big thing. You know, we are all running on fossil fuel, but energy can be a big issue. You know, we are using so many devices. Energy, you know, some are, of course, low-powered energy, but there are things that you need a lot of power. So can you create all the energy that you need? Marketing and customer relationship is very important. Now always, no human being is talking at the other end. Always is some third box, third box, uh, you know, picking your, what your request is, and then trying to analyze straight away, and then give you the answers. So this is customer, uh, you know, customer relationship is becoming all automated, come to think of it, using natural language processing. Gaming, okay, gaming experience. Now you have animation, metaverse, and all those things. Agriculture, I think this morning uh, the Vice Chancellor mentioned precision agriculture. I think Israel is one of the top in precision agriculture. They know hydroponics and all those things. They can know how to maximize, uh, you know, so precision agriculture. Human resources, talent acquisition, employee retention, analyzing resumes. So if you send, if, uh, if 1,000 people send resumes, you have this automated system to fill the resumes and then what the employer wants, maybe they want five people, maybe out of 1,000 or 2,000, you know. So you can shortlist automatically. You don't need to go through the HR manager doesn't, doesn't have to go through all those things. Pretty much what they want, what the resume contains. So all these are deep learning. Okay, you already know. Just add more layers and things like that. Autonomous. Gaming, health imaging. Now, some of my students, PhD students, they have done um, gastric cancer, lung cancer, I don't know whether brain cancer, or skin cancer, and so many other things they have done. Uh, fraud detection. Fraud is a big thing again today. Fraud detection, how well your software can, how your AI tool can capture these fraud detection credit cards and so on. Robotics, I already mentioned. Drug discovery. I think India produces a lot of drugs and exports as well. Um, so again, robotics, uh, AI kind of machine learning models can help in the drug discovery and production uh, and so on. Recommender systems, again, is useful for in certain industries and finance and algorithmic trading. AI tools, I think all of you are familiar. Now I Google around in preparation for this conference. There are so many AI tools already in the market. All sorts of AI tools, code generators. You can pretty much get good code generation. But again, usually at the end of it, they always put a caveat. They always put a caveat. You need to test, make sure it works. You know, sometimes it may not necessarily work. So now, in so software, uh, yeah, software specification is still there. But now you are specifying the software to the chat GPT or code deep or whatever, copilot, whatever. You are querying, you are a query engineer. You are querying, giving the spec that you need and ask the software to produce the code, generate the code accordingly. Of course, in coding, you always want, uh, you know, less code, uh, fast, super fast, and so on. So, of course, it can generate good algorithms and so on. Okay. 
and you have uh, character AI. I'm just selecting if you like character AI where you can okay. Okay, character AI where they can uh, you can basically if you are a lecturer they can get your speech your 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 train your voice and then you can give a lecture you no know, not with a human a real human but uh how whatever you are the robot kind of thing so there are a lot of things okay also birth bidirectional encoder representations from transformer one language to another language so there is encoder several layers in the machine language and then the encoder uh, and the decoder so all these things are already in place and all these tools will be innovating themselves as well so we have to keep track of what what tools are available and how to use these tools if you are going to create from the scratch it is going to take a long time you have to do testing you have to do many things but you have to use but in universities you learn you don't see you learn how to code in c sharp or java or python or whatever you learn how to code you must know the language if you don't know the language you don't know how to interpret the generated code so you need to know the language you know so it's important now huh? uh, yeah there are so many uh, you know write sonic let's say you want to create do a thesis a literature review this automated tool collect information related to your subjects summarize it find the gaps and then so you got one chapter already on literature review just using the tools but i am not sure whether it will do how well it will do because then these tools may not have access to journal articles yet unless the journals because it's proprietary the journals so they may not give access i actually try but uh, they won't access uh, the journal papers unless the journal gives the access la no so so all these things are available so you can minimize your work you can do uh, you know more thorough job uh, so these are all learning tools and now when you go out to work you may also be using all these tools there are subscribed uh, subscriber tools as well as non subscriber tools free tools as well Okay, hey, code generator. You have a uh, lot of code generators already. Not just one Chat GPT, but you have other code generators equally can translate, can generate any language. You want JavaScript, you want Python, you want uh, everything. Even machine learning. Okay, given this set of data, you can ask Python to you know the code generator to generate all the code for you, code the full code for you. It can do the pre-processing. you just give the input this is the data and how do you you know from there you can get the generate you know the model the accuracy and everything so a lot of things can be done automate you know automated tools you can also convert from one language to another language i think it's a trans transcoder and there are so many other things like huh? cloud based computing and so on the language translator tools again these are some of the things there are so many in the market already now okay spam filter i still get genuine mails into the spam folder and uh, uh, spam mail into my real folder so how can you minimize that so now they are looking at which domain it is coming from you know if it is education maybe there is not so much spam there from the education industry or maybe the person but the person the thing has to learn about the person before it can know whether it is spam or not so if you can reduce i don't know what percentage accuracy if you can reduce to 99.9% accuracy then your spam filter model may be, you know maybe the next uh, uh, next one used in the uh, email so there are so many uh, ways of doing the spam filter still it is not i mean it is okay because you don't know the intentions of the sender you see machine language cannot find out the intentions of the of the emailer you know 
So you can't really, you know, you cannot get 100% accuracy. You can improve. Uh, all these, I think, uh, you already know, more or less. Uh, okay, applications in logistics and supply chain, which is one of our main programs, logistics and supply chain. We have demand forecasting, route optimization, inventory management, warehouse. We have so many. And last mile delivery optimization, blockchain, flat box, preventive maintenance. So all these are all there. Okay, new improved application. I think I've already mentioned some of these. Uh, health is an important area. Health is an important area with the COVID-19 coming. Wow, the whole world is affected. The whole world is affected. Business is affected. Individuals are affected. Is there a better way to deal with it? <laughs> okay, building new researchers. Uh, I think more or less I uh, mentioned, for example, you, I mean, now is more of integrating all the tools and coming out with whatever the customer, whatever the customer wants, how can you produce a system or an application that is fast, fast delivery is important, fast delivery, quality must be there as well, inexpensive. Inexpensive, fast, in the, uh, uh, quality must be there, and uh, innovative as possible. Okay, so this is the game of the IT people now, IT professions. Okay. Can I give, for example, if I speak here, can it be automatically translated in real time in Chinese language, in Hindi language, in Vietnamese language, where they can, where it can be broadcast straight away in real time? Can it be done or not? The tools are there, but we don't know about the uh, the scalability, the volume, the 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 broadband, the other five G or whatever. Okay, all these things are coming. Autonomous vehicles. What about autonomous planes? Still not yet. I don't know how many people will take uh, the risk fly, uh, flying into an autonomous. Uh, but uh, still, you know, security is uh, safety is a concern. Uh, if you have been to Malaysia, this is a, a special kind of fruit called durian. It is a thorny fruit. Thorny fruit, you cannot just take just like that. You must put glove in order to touch the fruits and take it. So it is the trees are quite tall. The coconut trees are also quite tall. I see thousands and thousands of coconut trees. Can you come out with a drone or something like that? That can pick all these all these fruits. You can save a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of manpower. Of course, you have a lot of manpower here in this country. So anyway, uh, so these are this can be a dangerous one. Dangerous uh, the food is good, you know, it's tasty and good smell and all those things. But this is uh, something that smart blind stick. Uh, one of our students developed this is an IoT project, undergraduate project, smart blind stick. So you can smart people can use this blind stick. They can communicate in emergencies. It can detect um, herbs, water, and other obstacles. And it can. It is not patented yet. It is just uh, in the, you know. It can be added more features and things like that. It will be useful for many people. You know many. A drone picker integration with right frequency machine. Frequency machine is a, not a new thing. It has been there for many years already. Okay. Spooky to, uh, you know, other right machines where it is a frequency based therapies healing. You are a frequency. You are vibrating. I am vibrating. Everything in the hall is vibrating at a certain frequency. Your cells are vibrating. Your thoughts, your thoughts are frequency. Your intentions are frequency. Everything is frequency. You can Google and find out. You zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. It's, it's all frequency. It's all waves. So this new uh, generation 
or rather new ways of treating sicknesses and diseases can be frequency generated. That means they can know what frequency. If you are a healthy person, you are operating at somewhere between 650 to 700, 600 to 750 hertz, it's better, it's better. That's the unit of frequency measurement. If you're healthy, people with cancer and other sicknesses, they operate very low. 400 hertz, it's sick, it's not healthy. So, uh, so all this is the new way of doing, not everybody accepts, let's put it that way, okay? Not everybody believes, not everybody accepts, but this is an, a possibility. And there are people who believe, to actually use this to 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 uh, as a therapy, okay, frequency based therapy, not non is a non invasive and is just regulating your frequency, okay. For example, cancer, you are using chemotherapy, right? Chemotherapy mostly, but it kills both good cells and bad cells as well. But this frequency, the bad cells vibrate at a lower frequency, good cells vibrate at a higher frequency. So these frequencies can target, you know, specifically without destroying all the others. So there are ways of doing things. We just, you know, need to discover more ways of doing things better, you know, to improve our... Oh, what happened? Oh, okay. Okay, benefits, you're already very familiar, uh, all these benefits, automation, e efficiency, good is, it can churn tons of data, do models, do predictions, do classifying, everything it can do almost in real time. Almost in real time, as long as we have the computing power, we can do almost in real time. Personalization, healthcare, autonomous system, and so on. Uh, challenges. I think this morning uh, the Vice Chancellor addressed challenges in using these technologies responsibly. Um, one is bias and fairness, ethical concern, job displacement. How do you explain the models that is built? There are many hidden layers. You don't know how exactly it is done, the decision making at the various layers in order to come at the output layer. Okay. Lack of regulation. Regulation is pretty difficult, actually. But anyway, you need some kind of regulation if you want to use the technologies in a safe way. Security risk. People can use it for good purposes. People can also use for bad purposes. So again, it comes to human, human values, human integrity, human ethics. All this comes to that. Data privacy, again this morning, the VC mentioned, reliability and accountability uh, AI system. If there is an error, what happens? If, let's say, autonomous vehicle, you are going into autonomous vehicle, it runs into some accident, who is responsible? The company that produced the car, or Elon Musk, or, or who, you know? So all this safety, all these, of course, they have safety features built into it. Safety critical system. I think you all are aware of safety critical system. If something fails, it must fail safely. If something fails, it must fail safely. Safety critical system. So all these must be there. Okay, AI principle. This is a good one. Google. Uh, objective with AI. Be socially beneficial, otherwise, not a good invention. Okay, avoid creating and reinforcing unfair bias. It must be accessible to all, it must be based on fair algorithms or whatever. Be built and tested for safety, safety is important, especially in medical systems. Hey, you, you, you know, you are dealing with patients, you know, you are dealing with lives. What about if it is all automated? Machine learning, AI models use and to treat people. Now you have robotic surgery as well. Robotic surgery. Again, life is involved. So, how do you deal with that? Be accountable to people, incorporate privacy design principles. Four high standards of scientific excellence. 
be made available for users in accord with these principles. Okay, it will not design. Okay, at least Google will not design or deploy AI in the following application technologies that cause or likely to cause harm. All the weapons are good technologies. They are meant to deploy people or hurt people or kill people. So, what do you do? You know, this is all AI technologies, uh, weapons, or other technologies whose pr principal purpose is to injure people. Technologies gather information for surveillance. You know, today, as morning, I think this morning, the Vice Chancellor mentioned, data, your data is everywhere. <laughs> your data is everywhere. You sign up for, you sign up for, uh, GPT, your information is there. You sign up for Facebook, your information is there. Your information is everywhere. Are they going to use it? You know, so there should be some kind of concern, privacy, and so on. Technologies whose purpose contravenes widely accepted principles and international law and human rights. So all these are good principles. Whether the the developers will put all these things in in the design and development or not. Okay, this all may be a little bit different. Okay, augmenting CC with other human brain functions. Okay, the goal of CC, cognitive computing, is to mimic human intelligence and behavior. We know that AI and uh, machine learning have contributed immensely towards achieving this goal. More innovative applications are being developed daily almost. Uh, these are modeling mainly left brain functions. Well, you have two brains, left brain and right brain. These are all facts, logic, reasoning, all those is the left brain function. And AI is very good in modeling left brain functions, but not the right brain functions. Okay. Uh, so how about modeling the right brain functions? What are some of those? Awareness, consciousness, creativity, imagination, intuition, intention. This, how well cognitive computing can tap into these right brain functions is a challenge. It may not be possible or may, to some extent, it might be possible indirectly perhaps. Okay, how far can CC go in achieving this? So I'm just I'm not solving any problems. I'm just throwing problems. Okay, throwing challenges. Okay, as I mentioned, it's a disruptive technology. The danger, and uh, you can get immense benefits from all these uh, AI tools. Uh, however, as I mentioned, awareness, consciousness is not part of the AI model yet. Okay, whether it can be done or not, it is still. Sorry. Okay, how do we innovate cognitive computing? Okay, we have massive computing power. Now, quantum computers is still experimental, but quantum computers is based on quantum theory, quantum physics. Okay, you have superposition of possible cases. Quantum computing, if it is becoming commercial, it can solve for you know a few years in one hour maybe you know plastic capabilities are there if they can produce computers quantum computers uh, on a commercial basis. Okay, uh, increase bandwidth, five G E, it can go a long way. Okay, then developing more sophisticated, more powerful AI tools. Okay, all this is coming. Okay. But what about how do we, you know, it's not just machine. Humans are working with machines. Humans are far superior. You have the right brain and the left brain. And you have the heart as well. You know, you have the heart as well. So you have to engage the person. I mean, we know very little about ourselves, so I come to think of it, okay? Engage the whole person. You are a tripartite person. You are a tripartite. Like atom got proton, neutron, uh, electron, right? Your primary colors, we have RHB, RGB, RGB. We are a tripartite. We have a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? 
we have to engage the whole person in order to be more productive, more efficient, more, you know, ability, capacity, and so on. So that includes awareness, consciousness, intuition, imagination, and so on. Using Kainos uh, technologies, I mentioned, drawing principles from, from quantum physics, neuroscience, DNA, energy, all these will be useful. Uh, Einstein, everybody knows who Einstein is. He said everything is energy. This is his quote. Huh? Everything is energy. Match the frequency of the reality you want, and you cannot help but get the reality. This is physics. This is uh, the test. Uh, Nikola Tesla is a famous uh, physicist. Nikola Tesla, I think, is a famous uh, physicist. And uh, again, he mentioned logic will get you from A to B. That is left brain. Imagination will take you everywhere, right brain. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, so I'm just saying some things which not everybody believes, maybe, but uh, you know, maybe. For your curiosity, just for your awareness, possibilities. The human body is very marvelously created. The human body is marvelously created in complexity, energy efficient, self healing mechanism, adaptability, multifunctionality, and all those things. This kind of thing. Okay. okay, I mentioned about left brain and right brain. Okay. The left brain, we are very familiar. We are doing all the time academics. We do all left brain kind of stuff. You know, right brain is something that uh, we are we we are using it, but maybe to not to, to a greater extent. Okay, rhythm and all those things. Uh, there is also brain heart brain communication. The heart also has uh, what do you call. Um, what, the heart also has neurons, you know, uh, as also has heart communicates with the brain, you know, this is a uh, scientific uh, uh, discovery. Huh? So there is a uh, whole person, left brain, right brain, and then nervous system. The heart has a nervous system. The heart has a nervous system with short long term memory, short long term memory function. There's 40,000 neurons relaying information. Okay, awareness. I think I'm just going to go fast. Intuition, intention. If you can, if you know the intention of the email, you can remove all the spam filters you don't need anymore already. Intention what this sender is communicating with you, what he's telling you. Intention we can't put it in a machine language, you know. Um, Uh, you have conscious mind and subconscious mind and superconscious mind as well. Uh, I think it's a uh, uh, um, Okay, as I mentioned, you are a, a tripartite being, spirit, soul, and body, and you have the senses, you have your mind, your thought, your will, your emotion, and uh, you know, body, the five senses, all these things, how we make decisions. We make decisions. We have conscious mind and the subconscious mind. I will try to summarize quickly. Okay, uh, the subconscious mind is like a programmed model. It's like a program model. So every time some input comes in, you quickly from the subconscious mind, and then your conscious mind, and then you make decision. It may be good decision, bad decision depends on your. A lot of it coming from there. So anyway, I don't think I have the time to go through all of this. But anyway, quantum physics, neuroscience are all equally important in cognitive computing. Okay. Newtonian physics, I'm you know fascinated with all these technologies. Okay. Uh, classical physics and Newtonian physics are so uh, no classical uh, classical physics and uh, uh, quantum physics are totally quite different. Huh? I think I'm not going to do this. Uh, you are having only, you're using only 10% of your DNA. We can do fantastic things. With less than 10% of your DNA, 
you can do fantastic things. You can send robots to the Mars. You can do all these fantastic AI products. You can fly. You can do so many things with less than 10% of your DNA. What if your DNA can be stretched to 100%? Hey, you will be like a superman, you know. You can do fantastic things. You are only operating at a very low level. And we can do fantastic things with low level uh, DNA activation. You, you can Google and find out. What about the 90 other percent? Can we improve our DNA and access things that we cannot access before? Yeah, that's the possibility. We have two stranded DNA. Is there a three stranded DNA that can stretch your DNA capacity and so on? Anyway, you look at it yourself. So. Oh, sorry. Okay, takeaways. Cognitive computing has brought immense benefits. So we must develop, innovate. Novel applications, advanced models to further enhance our lives. Yeah, sure. However, no matter how sophisticated cognitive computing, it cannot adequately mimic humans. Humans are far, far superior. Okay. Uh, this requires engaging the whole person. This will then will operate at a higher level in improved performance. There is creativity, there is innovation. We can get just creativity just like that, you know. Uh, Noted to slog, uh, creative. There are two personalities, Dr. Caroline Lee and Dr. Joe Dispenza. We are very, very good expert in brain mind kind of uh, research. They work with thousands of people and produce thousand, uh, thousands of, uh, maybe not thousands, uh, hundreds of videos and then books also they have written on brain mind connection. How you can improve your brain capacity is called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity, not physically stretching the brain, but capacity wise stretching your brain to reach higher levels, including brain damage to your students. They can be renewed. You know, Alzheimer's disease, you know, all these they have worked with. So a lot of things can be done. They are not aware of it. So applying all these to physical, our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health and well-being. So also contributes to sustainable development. We don't have to spend money. All these positive thoughts. I like to engage in positive thoughts. Positive thoughts generates higher frequency. Negative thoughts generates lower frequency. Your body is, you know, if you have positive thoughts, it generates. Uh, uh, Chemicals, huh? positive chemicals, serotonin, melatonin, and all those things, your body is healthy. Negative thought contributes to bad chemicals. It generates bad chemicals when your body is sick. So it's, it pays to have positive thoughts, thankfulness, appreciation, you know, all those positive thoughts. So that is good for your health. It doesn't cost any money. It saves you from so many, you know, I don't fall sick. For 20 years, I have not really fallen sick for 20 years if not sick you know so so these are all important i think i raised more questions and provided no solutions okay. if you have any questions you can ask me now or later but otherwise thank you for listening hope you have taken away something i don't know what it is but hopefully i'll awaken you to certain things um, okay with that I will close. Okay, thank you. God bless you all. I will sit somewhere. Yeah, come. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Hold on.
on behalf of the organizing team, CPIT 2023, Science and Technology University. I thank our distinguished keynote association, for the enlightening keynote session on innovating cognitive computing for transforming lives. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Seeking the blessings of these holiness, Jagannath Shri Shivaratri Deshwaram Swami Swamiji, a warm and graceful afternoon to our esteemed guests, dignitaries, participants, faculties, and research scholars, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of CCIP 2020 Organizing Team and JSF Science and Technology University, I, Dr. Kushila Devi Sinagari, take privilege to welcome you all to the second keynote session on cognitive computing by our esteemed speaker, former Vice Chancellor, Twelfth University, uh, Dr. K. Chidananda Gauda, sir, son in law of the great poet Twelfth. Uh, it's a great privilege to introduce you to the group. He is a former Vice Chancellor, Twelfth University, member of Board of Governors, IIT Bombay, Dean of Engineering, Mysore University, former principal and 
uh, professor of computer science department SAC Mysore who completed his bachelor of engineering in 1964 from university of vishwasaraya college of engineering bangalore mtech from ms university baroda baroda and phd from indian institute of science bangalore post doctoral research from nasa new york usa in 1983 He has completed two postdoctoral research, another one in uh, Paris Ion RIA class. He has many distinguished professional recognitions. To name a few, visiting professor at Ion RIA Paris, France, chaired many international conferences at Japan, uh, Zurich, Paris, Italy, etc. Fellow Institute of Engineering, India, AICT expert, IST visiting professor, etc., etc. He has authored many research papers, published in well-known international journals, conferences, proceedings. Also published eight books on science and technology, as well as literary. Coordinated many research projects, funded by Indo-French Center of Advanced Research, Indo-French Kazakh uh, Intergovernmental Research Program. Has immense contributions to Karnataka and Kerala. Authored eight books on science and technology in Kerala. Tanigalu Vidyana Pradigalu, for which he received Karnataka Sanhitya Award in 1986. He has also written other books in Karnataka, Vidyana Vachanagalu, Patya Dari Pradigalu, etc. And he is a chief advisor for the development of Kuempu Kannada Manavakshara. He is also president of Prapratama Kannada Ganaka Sammelana. With this brief introduction, on behalf of the organizing team and the UST, I would like to welcome you to the conference. Both of you have to be thank you. Good one, 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 one. 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 Uh, general uh, Augmented Computing, uh, they will be covering how artificial intelligence and machine learning are uh, transforming data into wisdom. Because there are several uh, levels from data to wisdom, like data, information, knowledge, wisdom, and so on. So we will see how it is transforming data into wisdom. Uh, before that, uh, we will see. Uh, a poem by famous poet T.S. Eliot, who also mentions uh, this word, uh, where, the, where is the life we have lost in living? Where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is the knowledge we have lost in information? See, he has used all the words wisdom, knowledge, and information. Unfortunately, he has not used the word data. Because uh, he is not, uh, he was not a computer scientist like all of you. So perhaps he is not using it. Now we can use the, the information we have lost in the data. We can use it. Let me see the slide. Okay. So he continues with the idea. The cycles of heaven in 20 centuries bring us farther from God and nearer to them. This is what the uh, PSD says. So, what he means is, you know, where is the life we have lost in living? So, that means we say that you know, we are 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, and so on. But where is the actual life, you know, we have lived actually, is what he is telling. So, he is telling that we have lost a uh, forgotten wisdom in knowledge, in knowledge in information, and perhaps information in data. So, this is. Uh, uh, a poem by a famous uh, poet. This is from Chorus uh, from the Rocks. So, this will be some of the topics uh, we will be covering. So, first of all, 
So we should come on the data and economical knowledge data. ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ So this will be the topics which we'll be covering in the first uh, data information knowledge wisdom and enlightenment and then uh, one slide i think on artificial and uh, natural intelligences then introduction to cognitive computing uh, because as you know computing is a word which we use in the physical world whereas uh, cognitive is a word which we use in the living world so in particular uh, a living a world of or living organism in particular in the world of humans we use the word uh, cognitive in computing is uh, uh, from the physical world then features and benefits of cognitive computing will be considering applications and use cases of cognitive computing and uh, we will consider some humanoid robots like uh, uh, sofia you know so you know that uh, sofia uh, is the first citizen of the world and then uh, uh, she is recognized by united nations also but uh, she is not a human being she uh, she looks like a lady uh, humanoid robot and then what are the challenges uh, for uh, this area and future directions of uh, cognitive computing and uh, in the end so a summary so here uh, uh difference between data information knowledge and wisdom i will take one simple example uh here uh, what is data suppose you are given a set of 16 words and the 16 words such as apple banana orange grape pineapple mango kiwi lemon lime strawberry jamun karela Benberry, Firethorn, Jatropha and Bhutura. So 16 words are there. These are simply data. Why the raw and unprocessed facts and figures that have no meaning are context by themselves. They are not context by themselves. And then from data we get information. Suppose you are told that these words represent the names of fruits. so there were 16 names the first 10 of them that are commonly eaten around the world and the then karela and jamun are medicinal fruits some information is there and uh, uh, beanberry and uh, fire thorn are non edible fruits they are fruits but non edible and jatropha and datura are poisonous fruits so now you have the information you know that earlier you had only data but now you have information this is information the data that has been organized processed and interpreted in a meaningful way information provides context and relevance to data and enables decision making and action so we can take actions using that then the next higher level we have knowledge data information and knowledge so knowledge suppose you are able to classify these fruits based on their color shape size taste and nutritional value this is knowledge if you do that this is knowledge the understanding gain from the information through analysis interpretation and synthesis knowledge enables more complex decision making and problem solving so we can solve problems if you have uh, required knowledge and then wisdom what is wisdom In, uh, we call, call it as viveka you know in kannada and in hindi also called viveka wisdom suppose you are able to use knowledge of these fruits to plan a healthy and balanced diet avoid poisonous and non edible fruits avoid food allergies eat medicinal fruits and enjoy the diversity and richness of nature then you have wisdom this is wisdom the highest level of understanding 
and processing information representing the ability to apply knowledge and experience to make sound judgments and decision so this is wisdom wisdom requires reflection it requires many things it requires reflection insight and foresight and is often based on a deep understanding of the broader context and implications of decisions so that is what uh, uh, wisdom is so data information knowledge and wisdom and uh, finally enlightenment so this i will not cover now at the very end you know i have i have one slide on enlightenment was so all the former things you know information data information knowledge and wisdom they belong to the physical world but this enlightenment doesn't belong to the physical world it belongs to the can anyone say it belongs to the spiritual world so i will not be covering that now but i i have one slide at the very end of this presentation now comparing and contrasting artificial intelligence and uh, natural intelligence artificial intelligence the term that is specific uh, uh, specifies intelligence revealed by machines as compared to natural intelligence demonstrated by humans and sometimes more by other living beings organisms natural intelligence is the intelligence that is inherent in living organisms especially humans that allows them to adapt learn and survive in their environment this is how our ancestors survived actually ai and ni have some similarities and differences in their nature functioning and learning power nature what is the nature of ai and ni ai is based on human insights so that can be decided in a way that can machine can effortlessly actualize the task from the basic to those that are indeed more complex ni ni is natural intelligence ai is artificial intelligence ni is completely based upon the ability to change his or her surroundings through knowledge which we gain which we are they gain ai is used to build machines that can mimic human behavior and carry out human like tasks ni is the result of evolution and natural selection that shaped the cognitive abilities of living beings ai is an advancement made by human insights its early improvement is credited to norbert wiener who theorized on criticism mechanisms norbert wiener ni is made with intrinsic capacity to think reason recall etc etc and then functioning of both of them ai and ni ai systems can process vast amounts of data much faster than we human beings we are very slow compared to the ai systems ni systems can process and interpret information from the world around them using multiple senses so not only one sense but we can use more and more senses ai systems can work around the clock without needing breaks or breakfast rest or restlessness or even sleep ni systems require rest and breaks which can slow down the process ai systems can perform tasks that are too dangerous or difficult for humans ni systems can provide ethical and moral consideration in decision making which uh, uh, ai systems uh, uh, cannot do learning power of ai and ni uh, ai systems can learn from data interact with the humans and solve complex problems that require natural language processing machine learning computer vision and other cognitive skills ni systems can learn from different experiences understand complex concepts apply logic and reason solve mathematical problems recognize patterns make inferences and decision retain information and communicate with the fellow human beings ai system can improve over time over time by updating their algorithms and models ni systems can improve over time by acquiring new knowledge and skills this is how they can improve themselves ai systems are limited by their programming and may not be able to adapt to new or unexpected situations but uh, human beings are not like that 
ni systems are versatile agile and open ended and can deal with uncertainty and ambiguity so that is the plus point which all of us have so introduction so we will be considering in this uh, section introduction to cognitive computing uh, definition of cognitive computing overview of its evolution and uh, uh, this is this is a quotation cognitive computing is the next stage of artificial intelligence so this is the next stage of art, after after intelligence where machines can understand reason and learn from data not just process it so this is by bernard mar the best selling author uh, the definition of uh, cognitive computing so will be cognitive computing refers to the integration of artificial intelligence technologies and various disciplines such as natural language processing machine learning and neural networks to create systems that can understand learn and interact with the users in a manner akin to human cognition that is cognitive computing unlike traditional computing models cognitive computing systems are designed to analyze vast amounts of data ियर वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ आई बी एम वॉटसन and uh, cloud platform this is uh, uh, about foundations of cognitive computing artificial intelligence is a broader concept that encompasses various approaches to simulate intelligent behavior cognitive computing is a subset of ai so this is what we should remember cognitive computing is a subset of ai specially focused on creating systems that emulate human thought process so it is based upon our human thought process well ai encompasses rule based systems and statistical models in ai we use rule based systems and statistical models and cognitive computing emphasizes more on holistic approach many things it considers integrating multiple disciplines to achieve human like cognitive abilities it has interdisciplinary nature one key characteristic of cognitive computing is its interdisciplinary nature it draws on insights from computer science neuroscience linguistics and psychology also natural language processing nlp enables machines to understand and communicate in human language machine learning facilities pattern recognition and decision making and neural networks mimic the interconnected neurons of the human brain the convergence of diverse fields contributes to the richness and complexity of cognitive computing systems then we will briefly consider components of cognitive computing one is natural language processing second is machine learning third is neural networks so there is a, a quotation related to this cognitive computing is a convergence of big data 
machine learning, natural language processing, and human computer interaction. It is the ability of machines to interact with humans in natural ways using natural language and gestures and to learn from their interactions. This is by Rajiv uh, Ronanki, Senior Vice President and Chief Digital Officer at uh, Anthem. Natural language processing. So there's only one slide. Natural language processing NLP is a fundamental component of cognitive computing, enabling machines to understand, interpret, and generate human language. In cognitive systems, NLP is employed to process vast amounts of textual data, extracting meaning, context, and sentiment. So, uh, extracting meaning, context, and sentiment, all these three things can be extracted. This capability allows machines to engage in human like conversations, comprehend user queries, and provide relevant responses. NLP is pivotal in bringing the communication gap between humans and machines, facilitating more intuitive interactions. Then briefly, machine learning is, uh, is a crucial element in the cognitive computing framework, empowering systems to learn from data and improve their performance over time. In cognitive computing applications, ML algorithms analyze patterns, identify trends, and make predictions based on historical and real-time data. Whether it is recognizing speech patterns, predicting user preferences, or optimizing decision-making process, machine learning plays a pivotal role in enhancing the adaptability and intelligence of cognitive systems. Then one slide on neural networks. Inspired by the structure of human brain, neural networks are integral to cognitive computing's ability to mimic complex cognitive processes. These networks consist of interconnected nodes, neurons, organized in layers, allowing the system to recognize patterns, classify information, and make decisions. Deep learning, a subset of machine learning, leverages deep neural networks for tasks that is image recognition and natural language understanding. Neural networks are the backbone of cognitive computing, enabling the system to process information in a way that are parallel uh, human cognition functions. And mimicking human thought process about this uh, one is understanding context. This is very essential to understand the context. Learning and adapting. Second is learning and adapting. And there is a quotation related to this. Cognitive computing is the simulation of human thought process in a computerized model. So it is the simulation of human thought process in a compu uh, computerized model. Cognitive computing involves self-learning systems that use data mining, pattern recognition, and natural language processing to mimic the way the human brain works. This is from uh, Technopedia. So understanding the context, one distinctive feature of human intelligence is the ability to understand and interpret context. Cognitive computing systems strive to emulate this capability by considering the broader circumstances surrounding data and interactions. Understanding context enables these systems to provide more accurate and relevant responses, making them accept that handling nuanced situations. Whether it is natural language understanding or decision making, the incorporation of context enhances the overall intelligence of cognitive computing applications. So, another aspect is continuous learning and, and adapting. Continuous learning and adapting. Human cognition involves continuous learning from experiences, and cognitive computing systems aim to replicate this aspect. Through machine learning algorithms, these systems can adapt and improve their performances over time. Learning mechanisms enable cognitive systems to refine their understanding of patterns, user preferences, and data correlations. This is adaptability. Uh, this adaptability is a key strength, allowing cognitive computing to evolve and stay relevant in dynamic and ever-changing environments. And there is improved decision making and we will be considering 
these aspects advanced pattern recognition so in, for uh, uh, include which can make advanced pattern recognition and uh, data driven uh, insights cognitive computing is a combination of cognitive science and computer science it is the study of how to build systems that can perform tasks that require human intelligence such as perception reasoning learning decision making and communication this is uh, this quotation uh, the author is marvin minsky co founder of the mit artificial intelligence laboratory what is this advanced pattern recognition cognitive computing excels in advanced pattern recognition allowing systems to identify complex patterns within data sets that might be challenging for traditional computing approaches with their analyzing images speech textual information cognitive systems leverage sophisticated algorithms to recognize and interpret intricate patterns this capability enhances decision making processes across various domains from healthcare diagnosis to financial and there will be many insights that are driven by data in the realm of cognitive computing data is a cornerstone cognitive systems leverage large data sets to extract meaningful insights providing a foundation for informed decision making by analyzing historical and real time data these systems can identify trends correlations and outliers empowering organizations to make strategic decisions backed by a deep understanding of their data landscape then we will be considering some real world applications where co co cognitive com uh, computing is being used and will be used in future one is healthcare second is finance third is uh, customer service fourth is education fifth is entertainment there is a good quotation here cognitive computing is the ability of computers to learn from data and experience and to provide relevant timely insights and recommendations to user uh, and businesses this is by gini committee former chairman president ceo of ibm so these are the five main areas as care finance customer service education and entertainment how can we use it in healthcare one of the ground breaking applications of cognitive computing is in healthcare sector from disease diagnosis to treatment planning cognitive systems analyze vast data sets including medical records and research articles to provide insights that aid healthcare professionals cognitive computing's ability to understand natural language and process unstructured medical data contributes to more accurate diagnosis and personalized treatment recommendations second is disease diagnosis revolutionizing disease diagnosis cognitive computing's impact on healthcare is transformative particularly in disease diagnosis by analyzing vast amounts of patient data including medical records diagnostic images and genetic information cognitive systems assist healthcare professionals in identifying diseases more accurately and at, at earlier stages this not only improves patient outcomes but also contributes to the overall efficiency of healthcare delivery this is regarding the diagnosis and then the personalized treatment plan so we can give personalized uh, treatment uh, tailoring treatments with cognitive insights one of the strengths of cognitive computing in healthcare lies in its ability to generate personalized treatment plans by considering individual patient data including genetic information and treatment responses uh, cognitive systems can recommend personalized therapeutic interventions this uh, personalized approach enhances treatment uh, efficacy minimizes side effects and represents a significant step towards precision medicine then in the field of finance it is very useful cognitive computing can help finance institutions and customers in managing risk detecting fraud and optimizing investments by analyzing market trends 
customer behavior and regulations. Some examples of cognitive computing applications in finance are one is robo advisors. So these are robots. These are automated platforms that provide personalized and low cost financial advice and portfolio management based on customers' goals, risk tolerance, and preferences. And then other is uh, 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 after uh, robo advisors fraud detection. This is very essential. Uh, these are systems that use machine learning, natural language processing, and computer vision to identify and prevent fraudulent trans transactions such as money laundering, uh, uh, identity theft, and cyber attacks. Risk. The third is risk management. Robo advisors fraud detection, and the third is uh, risk management. These are systems that use predictive analytics, sentiment analysis, and scenario planning to assess and mitigate various types of risks such as credit, market, operational, and regulatory risks. Then it is useful in retail also. Cognitive computing can enhance customer experience and loyalty by providing personalized recommendations, offers, and support based on customer preferences, history, and feedback. Some examples of cognitive computing applications in retail are one is chatbots. So one is uh, important is chatbots. These are conventional agents that use natural language processing and generation to interact with customers and provide them with information, guidance, and assistance. And then vis visual search, after chatbots, visual search. These are systems that use computer vision and deep learning uh, to enable customers to search for products using images rather than keywords or filters. And then price optimization, another advantage in retail area. These are systems that use machine language and optimization techniques to dynamically adjust prices based on demand, supply, and competition, and other factors. And fraud detection, enhancing security through cognitive computing. In the financial sector, cognitive computing plays a crucial role in fraud detection by analyzing transaction patterns, user behaviors, and historical data, cognitive systems can identify anomalies indicative of fraudulent activities. The real-time processing capabilities of cognitive computing contributes to shift and accurate fraud detection, safeguarding financial institutions and their customers. Then they are also useful in the area of investments. New investments, if you want to make, you can take the help. Optimizing investments with the cognitive insights. Cognitive computing transforms investment strategies by analyzing vast amounts of financial data, market trends, and economic indicators. These systems can identify investment opportunities, assess risk, and optimize portfolio based on real-time information. The data-driven insights provided by cognitive computing uh, contribute to, to more informed and agile decision-making in the dynamic landscape of financial markets. And then useful in, for customers also. Customer service is another area where cognitive computing excels. Uh, they are in a, uh, uh, virtual assistants powered by cognitive technologies can understand and respond to customer inquiries, providing personalized assistance. The systems learn from customer interactions, improving their ability to address queries and issues over time. The result is more efficient in customer centric service transforming the way businesses engage with their clientele. And then this is a very important one, uh, education example, so Newton. So this, uh, Newton uh, has a different spelling compared to the famous scientist Newton, you know. So here there is a, a K is there. So uh, education example, Newton, there are two slides. This is the first of the two. Newton is a cognitive computing system that can provide adaptive and personalized learning experience for students and teachers. Newton can help students and teachers in various aspects of education, such as Newton Adaptive Learning Platform, a platform that can create and deliver customized courses and assessments based on the student's learning style, pace, and goals. And the other one is Newton uh, Alta, a courseware that can provide interactive and engaging content, feedback, and guidance for college-level math the chemistry courses. Newton test prep, the test preparation service that can help students prepare for standardized tests such as CET, SAT, GMAT, etc. 
by providing personalized practical practice questions, explanations, and strategies. This is the second uh, slide uh, for that. Some of the benefits of uh, Newton in education are improved learning outcomes and performance, increased motivation and engagement, enhanced teacher productivity and effectiveness, reduced educational gaps and inequalities. Some of the challenges and limitations of Newton in education are one is data privacy and security, and the other is pedagogical and ethical issues. A third is human interaction and collaboration. The other area is entertainment. Cognitive computing can create and recommend engaging and relevant contexts such as music, movies, games, etc., based on user preferences, mood, and context. Some examples of cognitive computing applications in entertainment are one is creation of content. So these are systems that use natural language generation, computer vision, and generate universal networks produce original and creative content such as stories, poems, songs, images, etc. Content recommendation also they can do. These are systems that use machine learning, natural language processing and collaborative filtering to suggest content that matches the user's interests, tastes and needs. Third is content analysis. It can analyze content also. These are systems that use natural language processing, sentiment analysis and computer vision to analyze the content and to provide insights such as rating, reviews, summaries, etc. So this is, uh, uh, you have heard of this IBM Watson, you know, this is uh, the, the, the Geopardy challenge. So in uh, 2011, about uh, 12 years back, IBM Watson made history on Geopardy, uh, winning against two of the most successful Geopardy champions, you know, Ken Jennings, Another was Brad Rutter. Watson won one million dollar prize. The computer won one million dollar prize and gave it to charity. So it gave it to freely to charity. It showed how machines interact with and understand human language. So this is what we learned, you know, from that. One is question answering prowess. So this uh, IBM Watson has question answering prowess, unmatched ability to understand and respond to diverse natural language queries, queries, then speed and accuracy, rapid real-time processing, delivering accurate answers faster than human competitors, adaptability to ambiguity, successfully interpreting and responding to nuance and ambiguous language in geopardy clues, and significance is a watershed moment, highlighting Watson's cognitive prowess, so it, like human beings, you know, more than human beings, it Watson's cognitive prowess and setting the stage for AI's practical applications in diverse industries, including robotics and humanoid robotics. Legacy, what is the legacy? Inspiring further AI exploration, Watson's triumph in, in geopardy remains a symbol of transformative cognitive computing capability. So, the so list of some, you know, based upon this uh, cognitive computing research, so many humanoid robots are existing. Famous of them are in you know, only Sophia by Hansen Robotics, Bina 48, Replica, Mitsuko, Pepper, Google Assistant, and then Asibo, Atlas by Boston Dynamics, Enevo by SoftBank Robotics, Pepper by SoftBank Robotics, Aikab. Then to UB Tech Alpha Series, Alice by Paul Robotics, etc. So, here I have uh, two short video clips of uh, two robots uh, a humanoid uh, female robot talking, humanoid male robot typing. So, here based upon uh, this uh, uh, ideas, a humanoid female robot is talking. Humanoid male robot is typing. So change from uh, you change from the presentation mode to the normal mode. The next slide you must change it to. So we are in the presentation mode. You please change it to normal mode, and then click. Uh, there you know you click. 
So this is you know, uh, the audience that interacted with Sophia in a session called as the Meet and Greet First Robot Citizen Sophia. So this is uh, appear, uh, expressed uh, uh, by Partha Paul. So she is uh, uh, the Sophia in the center. So as uh, she has come to India, so she is wearing a red uh, sari. Uh, and actually, she was welcomed by Arati. And Tirak was spoke to this robot you know, here and so on. So she came to uh, Kerala and she came to West Bengal also. I don't know whether she came to Bangalore, I'm not very sure. So this is, she is uh, wearing sari as uh, she has come to uh, uh, India. Hindi or just slide? I do. The typing and the uh, lady speaking and is there. That you go to the non-presentation mode. आगे बंद नहीं होती फर्स्ट नॉन प्रेजेंटेशन मोड की बंदी था ना जस्ट गो वन स्लाइड बिहाइंड Hmm. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This, this is the one actually. Uh, we can't, uh, that the sound has not uh, coming, means uh, it is not saved. But only you can see the uh, facial features when she is uh, talking. Uh, next slide, the next slide. Uh, you can. Uh, so, this So someone is typing. See, uh, he is typing as so we also type, you know. Okay, now go to the next slide. Now we can go to the presentation mode when you take the next, uh, you know, go to the presentation mode. No, you bring all of them, the entire set, you know, to the normal mode. So from there, you know, you click uh, to the presentation mode. So slowly, slowly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, challenges in cognitive computing. One is. Uh, uh, ethical considerations and other is uh, uh, bias in algorithms and third is the data sources and human machine collaboration key systems uh, may uh, pose ethical social and legal challenges such as privacy security accountability bias and regulation it will also have an impact on human work education and well-being key systems may lack human values and emotions such as empathy, compassion, and morality, and we will not be able to understand the meaning and context of human situations. So this is uh, by Tamil Hunt. So here is why AI may be extremely dangerous, whether it is conscious or not. This is what he says. You know, uh, whether it is uh, conscious or not, it is uh, extremely dangerous. This is. So here, ethical considerations. Navigating ethical challenges in cognitive computing. 
if cognitive computing becomes more per pervasive, ethical considerations come to the forefront. Issues such as privacy, data security, and responsible use of AI technologies need careful consideration. Organizations deploying cognitive systems must establish robot, uh, robust ethical frameworks to ensure the responsible and transparent use of these powerful technologies. Then the other one is uh, bias in algorithms. So this is bias in algorithm because of the, the data that is uh, you are using. Thus, in bias in machine learning algorithm, one significant challenge in cognitive computing is the potential bias in machine learning algorithms. These biases can emerge from the data used to train models reflecting historical inequalities. It is essential to implement strategies for detecting and mitigating uh, biases to ensure that cognitive systems provide fair and equitable outcomes across diverse user groups. And then the third is the data sources and human machine collaboration. So some of the trends and challenges that will shape the future of cognitive computing uh, in the next decade. So this coming decade will be one is the integration of multiple data sources. Cognitive computing will use multiple data sources and the output of multiple layers of analysis to help follow problems and provide insights. This will require data tagging, data cleaning, and data integration techniques. Human machine collaboration this is the other one. Uh, human machine collaboration. Cognitive computing will enable a new level of collaboration between humans and machines, where machines can augment and uh, assist humans in various tasks and processes. This will require a balance between automation and human control. He says that in a year, it will require a balance between automation and human control. So here I have two video clips about this automation uh, and uh, uh, automation without any humans, with no human machine collaboration. And the another one is the industrial automation with human machine collaboration. That you can just click, you know, not uh, in normal mode. Hmm? Well, you, 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 uh, where is this slide? You show this slide. Show this slide. Double click, my dear. Black area, double click. Double click. No, but it, uh, it is already there. It is uh, there in the slide itself. It is saved in the slide itself. No, add more salam, add Hello. But put it actually in the slide. So, huh? Oh, the next is Nodi. With the human machine collaboration, the other one you see. The previous one, uh, this is the second one. First one, uh, you, you, you then double click, Made. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, then. Okay. Then go to the next slide. Okay. So the future trends, uh, what are the future trends? Uh, one is explainable AI. So this is about uh, uh, whatever the AI does, you know. So we must, it must be able to explain it. So why it has done like that, why that logic is used. So it must be able to explain that, that is very important. The second is cognitive computing and IoT. So how uh, IoT and cognitive computing 
can come together. And the third one is integration with the quantum computing. So that is what uh, in future, you know, they are aiming to do. One is with uh, IoT and with quantum computing, and then how to explain uh, whatever decision has been taken. So what is this explainable AI? First, transparent decision making. Explain AI is emerging as a crucial trend in cognitive computing. As AI systems become more complex, understanding the reasoning behind their decisions becomes essential. So explainable AI techniques aim to make decision making process transparent by providing users with insights into how and why a particular decision is compliance with ethical standards. And then with I8 enhancing IoT capabilities using uh, uh, this uh, computing. Transforming connectivity. Cognitive computing plays a pivotal role in enhancing the capabilities of uh, Internet of Things. Uh, by inte uh, integrating cognitive systems with IoT devices, we can create intelligent networks that can analyze and respond to data in real time. This transforms IoT from data collection mechanism to a dynamic and adaptive system capable of making informed decisions based on cognitive insights. And real-time decision with IoT, incorporating cognitive into IoT, real-time decision support. This means that devices connected to the IoT network can leverage cognitive capabilities to analyze data on the spot and make instant decisions. This real-time response is invaluable. Then integration of uh, quant uh, with the quantum systems, integration of quantum and uh, uh, cognitive computing, quantum leap in computing power. Quantum computing holds the potential to revolutionize cognitive computing by, by exponentially increasing processing power. The unique uh, properties of quantum bits, qubits, enable parallel computations, opening a new frontiers in solving complex problems. The integration of quantum computing with cognitive systems would lead to breakthroughs in optimization, machine learning, and simulation. So this is what I told, you know. So humanoid uh, Sophia is greeted with Arati on the stage in Kata, uh, India, you know. So uh, actually in the, you can search the, using Google and you'll see she, when the Arati, you know, uh, is in front of her, she'll be looking on the Arati and, uh, and so on, you know. So we, I don't know whether you've seen it, it's very interesting. Uh, she is greeted with an Arati on the stage. So I told about uh, uh, enlightenment. So all the other in the data, in, information, knowledge, and wisdom, they belong to the physical world. Whereas uh, the this one, enlightenment, as I said in the beginning, it doesn't belong to the physical world. It belongs to the spiritual world. So that's why I said I will uh, give it in, a bit in the end. So there's only one slide about that. So the data of apple, banana, orange, grape, pineapple, mango, kiwi, lemon, lime, strawberry, jamun, karela, greenberry, firethorn, tetrofa, tura are all gross objects and objects in nature and belong to the physical world. All of them belong to the physical world. You can see them, you can uh, eat them with the retable. Second, information, knowledge, wisdom are all subtle objects. So these are you know, the fruits or gross objects, whereas the other ones are subtle objects, say like information. You can't touch information, you can't touch knowledge and so on. But it will be there, you know. So they are known as subtle objects. Information, knowledge, wisdom are all subtle objects and are all objects in nature and belong to the physical world. So our thoughts are very subtle, you know. Our thoughts are very subtle. On the contrary, enlightenment, you know, so after wisdom, I mentioned about enlightenment. On the contrary, enlightenment is subject to nature, whereas all the other things are out of nature. So the 20 fruits uh, and uh, uh, the information, knowledge, and wisdom, all of them are object to nature, whereas enlightenment, you know, that is subject to nature. Uh, on the contrary, enlightenment is subject to nature. It is about who am I? 
தூய்மை என் கனடா விஷயம் நானும் யாரும் நானும் யாரும் தூய்மை நானும் யாரும் இட் பிலாங்ஸ் டு தி ஸ்பிரிச்சுவல் வேர்ல்ட் திஸ் இஸ் வாட் ஸ்ரீ ரமண மகர்ஷி வெரி ஃபேமஸ் லைன் யூனா ஹூ ஏ மை தேர் மெனி புக்ஸ் ஆல்சோ பை ரமண மகர்ஷி ஹூ ஏ மை திஸ் இஸ் வாட் ரமண மகர்ஷி அண்ட் ஸ்ரீ ராமகிருஷ்ண பிரமோஸ் வாண்டட் டு நோ ஸோ தட் இஸ் இன் ஹூ ஏ மை ஐ மை திஸ் பாடி ஐ மை திஸ் மைண்ட் ஐ மை திஸ் வேர்ல்ட் நோ ஐ எம் டிஃபரெண்ட் யூ நோ ஸோ திஸ் வாட் ஐ நோ ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் தி லாஸ்ட் ஸ்லைட் So I started with a poem in the beginning. So we will end with a poem on cognitive computing. This poem is on cognitive computing for today. So there was once a computer so smart. There was once a computer so smart. It could learn and it could take part in tasks that were tough. And it knew all this stuff in tasks that were very tough. But it knew all this stuff. Cognitive computing. it is an art cognitive computing it is an art and uh, well, let us think about this and uh, thank you very much i would like to thank you thank you all of you thank you thank you I request Dr. Nattar sir to join me to do the honor. Thank you one and all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.